We've already talked about a lot of features of Blender, but we've still barely scratched the surface. So before we go on to working on our first project in the next course, I want to walk you through a couple other fun examples of what else you can do in Blender. In this lesson, we'll take a look at 2D animation using Grease Pencil. Grease Pencil is another type of object that you can have in Blender. So to see it, let's delete our default cube and then hit Shift A, go down to Grease Pencil and choose Stroke. I'll hit number pad period to frame selected. And while I'll call this 2D animation, it's still a full 3D object. It has thickness and it lives in 3D space. And just like meshes and curves, we can hit tab to go into edit mode. Here I can select any of our points and move them along any axis. But the majority of our work is going to be in a mode that's specific to Grease Pencil called draw mode. So let's switch from edit mode to draw mode. And here if we left click in our viewport, then we can just draw out new strokes. We can also switch over to the erase tool and erase some strokes. I'll switch back to the draw tool. And I think the default preset of pencil is a little bit too light here. So instead I'll go to the top left and switch the preset to ink pen. Now it's gonna be nice and bold. One of the features of grease pencil that I think is really cool is the ability to draw on the surface of our objects. So to show that, I'll switch from draw mode to object mode, hit shift A, and let's add a sphere. I'll right click and shade this as smooth, then select the stroke object in the outliner, and then switch to draw mode. If you don't want to go up here to the top left, we can also hit control tab and swipe up. Now, if I were to start drawing right away, it would go straight through our sphere, but we can change where our stroke is placed up in the header. Right now it's set to origin, but we can set this to surface. Now when we draw, it'll be projected right on the surface. Though it's offset a little too much, so I'll go back to that menu and set the offset to 0.01. Then on this sphere, I'm gonna draw a little face. So I'll hit one to go to front view, zoom in a little bit, and I'll draw some eyes and a mouth. Down in our timeline, notice that we already have a keyframe. In fact, the drawing itself is tied to our keyframe. So if we were to move our playhead back behind the keyframe, we wouldn't see our drawing. We'd only see it when we're in front of this keyframe. And to make this drawing change, then we just need to go to any other frame in the future, turn on auto keying so that our changes are actually creating a new keyframe, and then just draw something else. Now when I'm behind this keyframe, it plays the first, and when I'm in front of it, it plays the second. Notice how, unlike in 3D animation, there's no smooth blend between the two. It just instantly switches from one to the other. For this example, I'd like to show our little sphere guy talking, but I don't want to have to redraw his eyes every time. So what I'll do is make his eyes a different layer than his mouth. I'll go ahead and delete this second keyframe here, and then I'll go up to the layers up in the top right of the tool properties. Right now our layer is just called lines, which contains everything. I'll double click that and I'll rename this to eyes. Then for the second layer, I'll rename this one mouth. For the eyes layer, I'll go ahead and erase his mouth. I'll switch over to the erase tool. And if I were to erase it now, since I'm on a new frame, then it would just switch it like so. But instead, I'll go back to the first frame, erase his mouth, and now it's just the eyes. Now on that first frame, I'll now switch over to the mouth layer, which by the way, we can also do in the properties editor. If we go down to the grease pencil data properties, we have a layers section right here. But with the mouth layer, I'll switch back to my draw tool and draw him a mouth. Then I'll move forward in time, draw a different mouth, go forward again, draw another one, and I'll keep doing that a couple times. All right, after I do that, then now I can play through this animation and it looks like he's talking. To show you a couple other grease pencil features, let's make this sphere into a sun. First thing that I'll do is go to object mode and select it. Then I'll go to the material properties, click new. And to make this a flat color without any shading, I'll switch the surface shader from principled BSDF to emission. Now I can just set this as a single color like yellow. And to see that, I'll switch the 3D viewport over to rendered view. Now I'll add a new grease pencil object to make some rays go around him. I'll hit shift A, grease pencil and blank. Then I'll switch from object mode to draw mode. And I'll just quickly draw some rays going around him. To make these rays yellow, we just need to edit the material. So I'll go back to the materials tab in the properties editor and I'll rename the material to rays instead of the default black. And I'll set the base color to a yellow. If we want, we could even fill this in by checking on fill, going to base color and turning up the alpha. 
and we could make these an orange or a red, but I'll leave it as just the strokes, so I'll uncheck fill. Notice though that the color is a really dull yellow and not what we set. That's because grease pencil objects can also react to light, and our light is really far away, so it's appearing dark. To turn off this behavior, we just need to go to the layer and turn off use lights. Lastly, our color isn't as saturated as we've set it. To fix that, let's go to our render properties, down to color management, and switch the view transform from AGX, which is meant for realistic rendering, to standard, which is used more for compositing and drawing. That way, whatever color we set in the material properties will be exactly what shows up in the render. Now, I started drawing when I was on frame 52, and so our rays only exist after frame 52. So to make sure that they're there the whole time, I'll select that keyframe, hit G, and move that all the way back to frame one. To make this a little bit more fun, let's add some movement. The first thing that I'll do is go to the modifiers. Grease Pencil has some special modifiers that are unique to its object type. And the one that I want now is noise. Now, as I play through my animation, this jitters around a bit. Though I don't really want it to jitter the location of all of these points because that's messing up some of the points on this. So I'll take the position influence and move that way down and instead influence the thickness. I also want the noise to be a little bit smaller, so I'll drag up the noise scale. Now, as I play this back, it looks more like a traditional 2D hand drawn animation. For even more movement, I'll go back to frame one and switch to object mode. What's cool about the fact that this is an object just like any other in Blender is that we can also animate it. So on frame one, I'll hit I and insert a rotation keyframe, and then I'll go to the end of my animation on frame 250, rotate this a bit, and then hit I and insert another rotation keyframe. Now, as I play this back, it spins as well as twinkles. I can even take these objects, which by the way, I guess I should rename them, I'll call the second one rays and the first one face. I can take both of these. I'll hold down control to select both of them in the outliner. And then I'll hold shift and left click and drag those onto the sphere to parent them to the sphere. Now, when I select my sphere and move it around, everything else follows. I'm sure you can see how really powerful this is for concept art, storyboarding, and cartoony effects. There's also one other effect that I want to show you just because I think it's really cool. So I'll go ahead and disable this collection and then hit shift A and just add a new blank grease pencil object. Then I'll hit control tab and swipe up to go to draw mode. And on this one, I'll just write a simple message. I'll hit one to go to front view. And I'll write out, let's learn Blender. Now I drew this out on frame 233. So let me go ahead and take this keyframe and just drag that all the way to frame one. And I'll turn off auto keying for now since we won't need it anymore. And it's always safer to have that off. Now, what I can do to make one of those handwriting animations is just go to my modifiers and add a build modifier. Now, as I play back my animation, that gets written out over however many frames are listed in the build modifier. I can also switch the timing from number of frames to natural drawing speed, and now it'll play back exactly as I wrote it. Though maybe I want to speed that up a bit. There's a lot we could talk about when it comes to the grease pencil. So if you're interested in learning more about it, definitely check out Paul Kajeji's courses on CG Cookie. He'll show you how to get started and use it to make some pretty awesome artwork. But even with just the tools that you've learned in this lesson, there's a lot that you can create. Maybe make a video of a note being written out like this and send it to somebody. I bet they'll think it's really cool. 